Good evening, it's Jim here. Welcome to our live revision session, our warm-up for paper one, which is uh, NXL. This one is for NXL. So any AQA students here, half past six for you. This is for NXL. And uh, we've got Graham with us this evening. Good evening, Graham. Evening, Jim. Are you okay? Good, mate. So do you want to take us through the, the, the basic idea of the session? Did, from a technical point of view, just let everyone know, obviously this session is live, uh, but it is recorded. So uh, any uh, points that we cover and the slides indeed will be available as soon as the session ends on YouTube. So a chance if you want to go back over some of the stuff. Uh, and also don't forget we are using uh, the live chat for uh, questions as they come in. Please don't keep typing the same question in. I think we're on slow mode tonight because we've got almost a thousand people with us live. So every 60 seconds. So if you've got a particular question on exam technique, or a particular topic, uh, put it into the live chat. No predictions, we don't do them, so don't bother asking. We've no idea what's in the paper. We're not bothered what's in the paper. All that matters is what turns up in the paper. Prediction is a mugs game, so don't bother asking. Having said all of that, Graham, over to you, mate. Yeah, there's some just quickly in the chat window. Is it pointless watching this if um, I'm an AQS student? Uh, yes. Utterly pointless. Half six. <laughs> half six really so um yeah so the general format is um we're going to do a couple of uh, i did a video jim the other a couple of I'm, I'm all over the gram i did a video asking what students maybe want us to cover and um everything in this session is what students ask for but we've left lots of time for q a so we're going to do a couple of easy questions run through some exam technique and if you've got any particular questions we will certainly do our best for um to answer them should we just uh, start off with a couple of easy questions that were all all requested on our instagram page so uh true or false outsourcing is where a business relocated activities such as manufacturing and production 
overseas. What do we think? Is that true or false? Lots of answers coming in. Uh, quite a straightforward one. Shall we reveal the answer to that? Uh, yeah, it is false. It is uh, it is offshoring. So make sure you know the difference between those two key terms. Okay, well done, everyone. Should we move on to another one? So um, this is a challenging one, this one. FDI stands for Foreign Direct Investment. Is that what FDI stands for? So that would come under theme four, global. Is it uh, FDI stands for Foreign Direct? direct investment and you would link this to uh mnc's part of theme four um part of the global area well done everyone yeah quite straightforward but um it was requested true yeah it is indeed true foreign direct investment brilliant let's do one more true or false so boston matrix um asked for several times on our instagram page according to the boston matrix a product with a low market share in a low growth market is classified as a dog so um a product with a low market share in a low growth market is classified as a dog is that true or is that false what do we think yeah so lots of people going for should we see what the answer is yeah, it is indeed true. Now, conventional wisdom, if you believe everything you read in a textbook, which I'm not sure you should always do, that dogs should be, products should be maybe declined, withdrawn, or put out their misery. Well, that's not strictly true. There's some great examples of dogs that are highly profitable. If you think of something like um, Cadbury's Whole Nut, low market share product in a market that doesn't grow a lot, but brings in millions of pounds for Cadbury. We do need harder questions, we do, but the exams tomorrow, and these were requested, so... Christiana, you know, if you think these are easy, great stuff. Shall we have a look at um, a little bit of exam technique? So paper one is marketing people and global businesses. As you may know, we're going to draw questions from theme one and theme four. Two sections, 50 marks each. Each section will have two four mark questions, a 10 mark question, a 12 mark question, and a 20 mark question. So section A, Two four marks, one 10 mark, one 12 mark, one 20 mark question. Shall we see what's on the next slide, please? So four mark questions, uh, usually explain, calculate, or draw. You might have a construct question, but the explain questions, four marks, will usually be explain one or explain how one. Therefore, for every four mark explain question, you just need one point. You make your point, you analyze that in context. Now, there's a one mark for knowledge, two application, and one mark for analysis. What we find is with the format explained questions that um, students overanalyze at the expense of application. To get those two application marks, you must have two separate strands of application. Okay. Now, um, you could start with a definition. And that would secure the knowledge mark, but you don't have to because you can get that one knowledge mark in the main body of your response. The average four mark explained question last uh, in the summer exams was around about 2.2. More students failing to apply. Um, the calculate questions, this is I'm reading the chat window. Do we have to write our answers to two decimal places? If it asks you to write to two decimal places and you don't do that, you'll lose a mark. It will be very specific in the question. It will say calculate to two DP in brackets, two decimal places, and then you would need to do that. So the calculate questions, one mark for knowledge, three marks for application. Every calculation question you get, um, follow this format process or formula sorry formula or definition if you don't know the formula then your process so you're so writing the formula is going to get that knowledge mark and each step in your working out contributes towards your application mark if you don't show you're working out and you get the answer right you will still get full marks but it's good practice to always show your process that way if you get your final answer wrong you can still get a maximum of three marks out of four and draw uh, that would probably relate to um, supply and demand. That's generally where it comes. You know, comes. You could get some like you know, draw market map. 
not beyond the realms of possibility, but generally draw tends to be for supply and demand diagrams and asking you to uh, illustrate a shift in supply or demand. That's where the analysis mark comes from. So you might have to draw supply and demand diagram, label it correctly, get your axes correct. There would be a scenario where it shifts and that would be where you, uh, your analysis mark comes in. It was examined last year, supply and demand uh, chart very poorly answered. It was a shift in supply. A lot of students thought it was a shift in demand. Make sure you know the difference between factors affecting supply and factors affecting demand. Crucial stuff. So I'm looking at the chat window. So I think we've covered four more questions, you know, in a little bit of detail there. You know, they don't have to be really lengthy. There's one mark for knowledge. There's only two mark for applications. There's only one mark for analysis. Do not over answer the four mark questions at the expense of you know, a lot of students get really excited writing loads and loads for the first format explain questions and they don't finish the paper, right? You just need two strands of application, one mark for analysis, sort of 20 mark question. Okay, four minutes maximum. Good stuff. So income elasticity of demand was, um, it was a question or a topic has been asked loads over the weekend. Can we do something? else on so katie's there would four sentences should should four sentences be fine it's impossible to say you could you can get four marks in four sentences of course you can all an examiner is looking for is for your four marks explain questions do you show accurate knowledge and understanding there's a mark is the two pieces of context there's there's three marks your two marks for application plus your knowledge mark one mark for analysis you know you can of course get the get the marks as long as you you, you know as long as you are meeting that mark allocation you're going to be absolutely fine so we've got a restaurant here in sunderland which is real and exists called titanic um after average incomes in sunderland increased from thirty two thousand to thirty three thousand two hundred eighty pound a year the number of bookings at the restaurant increased from 1500 per month to 1575 per month can you calculate the income elasticity of demand for titanic i think this activity will go down really well so can you work out the income elasticity of demand for titanic let's have a go now i can see some um, i can see some answers in the chat window where students will get this will be a four mark question by the way so i can see some that get no marks but if you showed you working out, you'd get three out of four. I can see somewhere the answer is virtually correct, but there's something just missing, and I can see lots of correct answers. So um, I think, got, do you know, I think we've got only fifteen hundred people joining us. So the chat window is uh, is is on fire. Let's have a look. Okay, so there's a range of answers on um, on screen. There's a range of answers. Now, just before we reveal the answer, um, some have obviously got the formula the wrong way around. So you've obviously, some students have worked out the percentage changes correctly, but then got the formula for income elasticity of demand the wrong way around. So if you had, if you just wrote down the wrong answer and that's all you wrote down, no marks. But if you showed you're working out and we could see actually everything's right, you know, you, you know, you, you, you know, your percentage changes are correct, but you've just got the final part wrong. You're going to get some marks. So always show your process. If you didn't put the plus sign in front of it, you're going to lose a mark. OK, so if you just put 1.25, you're not going to get full marks because it is not 100 percent accurate. So shall we reveal the answer? It is. Uh, plus 1.25 which tells us for every one percent change in income the quantity demanded will change by 1.25 percent so this is how you know this is really textbook stuff of how you should answer a calculation question we've got the formula at the top so we've got the knowledge mark there and you can see every step in that calculation every step in that calculation attract marks so we've got the first percentage change in quantity demanded difference divided by the original times 100. We've got the percentage change in income 
difference divided by original times 100 and then we've got our formula where we've transposed those figures into it four to five divided by the four plus 1.25 if you divided the four by the five you're going to get a completely you're going to get the wrong answer but if that was just if if we could see that you you've got the percentage changes correct and you just got the uh formula the wrong way around you're going to get some marks so always show your process well done so we say is, is that a scary question um it's been examined before where uh, some and some students have struggled with it a lot of students left it blank do not leave anything blank so what you need to do is if you think actually i don't know how to work that out but i know what income elasticity of demand is write the definition down of it so income elasticity of demand measures the responsiveness of demand to a change in income you're going to get a mark now if it's so and do you need to mention if it's inferior or luxury if it's only asking you to calculate it don't waste time you you know you do not need to do that if it's all the question was calculate the income elasticity of demand so just by adding these little things like oh well this shows it uh, it's a it's a not it's a luxury it's a normal good a luxury good just not needed um so you don't need that so no well done everyone well done everyone so the 10 and the 12 mark questions on screen so each section you're gonna have a 10 mark question and you're gonna have a 12 mark question so the 10 mark questions and the 12 mark questions are very similar both require you to assess there will always be something like assess the value assess the impact assess the benefit or something like that they require balance which means you need at least two paragraphs which oppose each other you have to uh ellis say what about eight markers eight markers do not appear in paper one or paper two they only appear in paper three that's because you've got no four mark questions in paper three so you have no eight mark questions in paper one or paper two so do not be concerned about the eight mark questions they only appear in paper three roughly how many pages for a 10 mark question you're 10 marks in a side easily um so assess the required balance now you must have a judgment at the end a lot of students a lot of students do not write a conclusion at the end of their answer the need you need a support of judgment okay and we'll touch on that later the importance of that and how you get the marks um, awarded for that so we see the mark allocation there don't be concerned about the mark allocation but the reason i'm showing you the mark allocation is to, to illustrate the difference between a 10 and a 12 mark question so a 10 mark question two marks for knowledge two marks for application three marks for analysis and three marks for evaluation the 12 mark questions are identical apart from there is one more mark one more mark for analysis one more mark for evaluation i was taught 10 markers have no conclusion that's unfortunately that's 100 percent incorrect all 10 mark questions all 12 mark questions must have a supported judgment and if you don't want to take my word for it you can check the mark schemes uh, on the edxl website you must have another question about the eight markers just to reiterate no eight mark questions on paper one paper two they do not appear do not be concerned by eight mark questions they're a paper three only so let's just move on to the next slide to delve a little bit deeper into the difference between the 10 and the 12 markers now a lot of students think well i have to write an extra paragraph for a 12 mark question it, of course you can do but you don't need to as long as you've got balance in your answer so i'm going to show you the mark scheme that examiners use when they're marking questions these are these are publicly available they're on the edxl website so we want to be in level four that's what you want that's where that's where the magic happens the the, the top level where the main marks marks are in a 10 mark question our level four descriptor states assessment is balanced well contextualized using quantitative and or qualitative information the rest of the descriptor talks about a support of judgment but i've not shown you that here because i just want to focus on the difference between the 10 and the 12. the 12 mark descriptor when is paper one? Oh, it's coming up uh very quickly it's tomorrow so in a 12 mark question the level four descriptor says it's exactly the same apart from the words wide ranging okay so given what i just talked about on the previous slide there's one more mark for evaluation and one more mark for analysis therefore 
the only difference between the 10 and the 12 mark questions is two marks, one more mark for analysis and one more for evaluation. We would expect your answer to have a little bit more breadth and a little bit more depth. You've got a couple of more minutes to write. Okay, that's the difference. Okay, you can still get 12 marks with two paragraphs and a conclusion. So three paragraphs, you can get 12 marks. As long as your answer shows balance and you have a supported judgment. So if you had a 12 mark question that says, assess the value of market segmentation to a business such as McDonald's, 12 marks. Uh, your first paragraph could be why market segmentation may be of value to McDonald's. There's your paragraph. You've got to have balance. So you would balance that by saying why market segmentation may not be of value to McDonald's. There's your balance. Then you give an overall judgment as to whether it is of value. That's all you need to do. There's a slight difference if the question says assess the importance of, because you can answer that slightly differently if you want. So, um, yeah, critical path's not in um, paper one, paper two. So don't be concerned about critical path. So if the question was assess assess the importance of price to a business such as Aldi, assess the importance of. So you could say why price is important, why price isn't important, and then a judgment, there's your balance. Or you could say why price is important, but why something else of the marketing mix may be more important. So you could say, well, actually, price is important to Aldi, and these are the reasons why. However, um, place may be more important and explain why than an overall judgment. Do you have to put counterbalance on the end of both paragraphs? Well, you can do. You can, I mean, you can do that. A lot of students do. But all you need to make sure is that your assessment is balanced. So let's, we'll, we'll use that market segmentation um, example. So assess the value of market segmentation at McDonald's. If you give one reason why it is of value, then another reason why it isn't of value then a judgment, you've already got balance there. So adding a however point at the end of each paragraph doesn't really add any any real value to your answer because you've already got balance. But if you'd said uh, one reason why market segmentation is of value and another reason why it is of value, there's no real balance there. So then you would need however points at the end. The easiest way to, to, to approach a 10 and 12 marker is make sure that your paragraphs are opposing and they're, they're therefore what that you're going to get the balance so um of course if you're if you've got time and you're writing however points at the end of course you can do that but look at what the mark scheme says all it says is assessment is balanced and you can get that from paragraphs that are you know oppose each other so if it's assess the value why is it a value why is it not a value assess the impact a positive impact a negative impact and a conclusion okay so I think about now just one at the bottom there. How about it assessing benefits? Well, if it says benefits, why is it a benefit? Why is it not a benefit? Then a conclusion. Don't be too concerned about the plural. Um, the mark schemes make no reference to how many paragraphs you need or plurals. All it says is assessment is balanced. As long as you're given a balanced assessment, you will be fine. And you can look at sample student answers on the edXL website in the examiner's reports. There's plenty of examples there where students are just doing three paragraphs, you know, which includes the conclusion. We're going to do mops and conclusions shortly. So uh, what I would like to do is just show a potential assess question. This was uh, recommended by lots of students on Instagram um, as a topic they were a bit unsure of because it links to global, so ethnocentric global marketing strategies. Okay, it was examined about three years ago. It lends itself to a 20 marker. Should a business have a polycentric or an ethnocentric marketing strategy? Evaluate both, recommend one. It lends itself to a 20 marker. So American fast food burger business Wendy's wants to enter the market in China. The fast food market in China is crowded obviously means it's competitive, with KFC, McDonald's, and Burger King amongst multinational brands who've got some MNCs there competing with domestic businesses. Okay, so can we just have a look at our so little question here, Jim? So 
you could have a question as long as assess the value of the benefit of Wendy's adopting an ethnocentric approach to marketing. So say that's our 10 or 12 mark question. So assess the value of ethnocentric and an ethnocentric approach to marketing for a business such as Wendy's. So you would need balance. Why ethnocentric is a value, why it's not a value, then a conclusion. So in the chat window, we should know about ethnocentric marketing strategies. It could come up tomorrow. So, so we'll probably be, well, we will all be familiar with that. Can you think of a specific benefit and downside that's all we need that would give us balance of adopting this approach to Wendy? So we're going to start the music, type in the chat window, and already there's some absolutely fantastic answers I can see coming up brilliantly. So we are really on top of it because this is a tricky topic. That's a really, that's a really good one there. Yeah. Products aren't localized, so to meet local needs and wants, so remain true to the brand image. And that's what ethnocentric is, isn't it? You know, you're adopting your, 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 your culture to other markets, really. Yeah, it might not suit other customer needs. That's a really good argument, Josh. Yeah, it is cheaper as they don't have to change marketing. Uh, you know, they can just roll out the same existing products. Uh, Titan there, that, that is that is really good there about translate the same marketing approach so they don't need to do research, uh, market research. Yeah, so there was really some really, really, really insightful, some really insightful answer there. And Lucas saying you're linking it to globalization. You know, you know, there is, there is a link there, isn't it? So it's brilliant. Should we have a look at some uh, possible responses, what we thought? You know, again, you wouldn't need for and against. So remember, adopting an ethnocentric approach means that Wendy's would approach China from the same perspective as its own culture. So on the plus side, why it may be of value, you know, um, it could allow Wendy's to be profitable very quickly. That's of course, and you've got all this in the, you know, in the chat window, they wouldn't need to adapt their products such as there's some such as seizing, selling different types of burgers for the Chinese market, therefore reducing the need for market research. Also about economies of scale, there was lots of mention in the chat window there about economies of scale. Remember, you would need to link that to the context. For example, they're buying the same ingredients as they do in the US, but they're going to buy those in greater quantities. So therefore it could allow them to reduce unit costs great great stuff and on the on the flip side here's our balance by not adapting to the chinese market it may struggle to differentiate so there was lots of talk in the chat window of differentiation and it was really really good to see how students were linking different models and theories together so that was brilliant so it may struggle to differentiate itself from its competitors such as kfc and burger king especially as the market is crowded and the likes of KFC will already be established. So really what we've got on screen there is really the template of how you would answer a question such as this. If this was 10 marks or 12 marks, if if you, you I mean, we're not saying for any, any way there's enough depth of analysis in there, you would need more, but all you need is plus and minus, that would give you the balance, but you must have a supported judgment at the end of your response. In the chat window, I've seen two or three references to um, economies of scope that could only lead me to believe there's AQA students here because economies of scope isn't on the Edexcel specification. So if you're an Edexcel student and you're reading economies of scope in the chat window, you don't need to know it. So don't write about it. So what's in the paper? We're saying we're not, um, you know, we're not, we're not Darren Brown. Whatever that means, I've heard he can predict the future. We will not make predictions. So let Jim talk. Um, do you want to say hello, Jim? Hello, everyone. I'm just uh, sat back watching and managing the live chat and uh, enjoying it, Graham. So keep going, mate. It's good. Yeah. Jim, don't talk if you're being held hostage. <laughs> Graham, we are in two separate locations. So, yeah, let's move on. So when Jim says he's all tied up, that's not what he means. So the 10 and the 12 mark questions. Now, there was, there's been three or four comments in there about 
I've been told or whatever, I do not need. Yeah, big shout out to Dave Edwards. You know, Dave's a, um, a big fan of to you. We were chatting to him a few weeks ago. Keen golfer, he was telling me. Keen being the operative word. Now, you must provide a conclusion at the end. You have to have a conclusion. Otherwise, you're not, you can't get full marks. Now, you need to be careful when you write your conclusion at the end. It needs to be built on prior analysis, so it needs to build on that. But you've got to add something new, okay? It cannot be just a repeat of what you've already said. There's got to be either a new piece of context in there, maybe a justified depends on, or maybe an element of mops. So you will be familiar with mops. You don't have to use mops, but you will be familiar with it. Mops is maybe your decision has been influenced by the market the business operates in. It, the business's objectives, the product or services it offers, or the situation it finds itself in. So if we look at that Wendy's example of adopting an ethnocentric approach, so you could, you could, you know, you've got your plus and your minus point there, you've got your balance and your conclusion. You might add in there, actually, you know, not adopt not adopting or not catering. <coughs> to the needs and wants of the local market may put Wendy's at a disadvantage because many of the other businesses in there, like KFC, do adapt their products to the local market. So what you're doing there, you're using a bit of mops there, you rec you're recognizing the importance of the product in the market so um, to add value to your response. Can you repeat the point in the conclusion? Of course you can. I mean, you will build on prior analysis, but you have to have something new in there new piece of context maybe a justified depends on you know don't just say it depends on this 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 and this that's not evaluation choose a depends on factor and explain why it depends on that yeah that's what mops is market objective product situation so that could be its financial situation the economic situation now you don't need to use mops you don't have to use mops at all it is mentioned in some of the mark schemes for the 20 markers, but it's just part of the indicative content. So if you don't use it, don't be concerned. Okay, let's move on. So I've just got some top tips here. So you might want to maybe watch that again and pause this, maybe read it, make some notes or whatever. Now, I would recommend to avoid using the words of the question at the start of each paragraph. That can just waste time. So why would you start with one one reason why market segmentation is of value to mcdonald's is there's no value to that just say it. one reason is make your point and then analyze it in context you can define the uh, the key term you could define market segmentation just relating to that question but you don't need to because you can show your knowledge and understanding within your answer what we're finding is a lot of students, and this is borne out in the examiner's reports, are writing too many underdeveloped points, write fewer, better developed points. Okay, that's why you only need balance. So lots of students writing three, four, and five paragraphs, but what they're doing is they're, they're not getting the depth of analysis we need. So write less, score higher. As long as you've got balance from two opposing paragraphs, you're gonna be fine. What is market segmentation? Market segmentation is splitting down the market into different groups of people with similar characteristics. Now, be selective. Selectivity is moving from what do I know to what do I use? Now, this is really, really important. So whatever question you get, whether it's on market segmentation or moving from an entrepreneur to leader or global marketing strategies, there will be three or four or five different points you could make. We do not need you to do that you be selective and select the two you're going to write about that's all you need to do think about it so plan your answer especially for the 12 and the 20 mark questions make sure your answer is balanced and just to reiterate i've mentioned it countless times now make sure you write a conclusion support a judgment at the end of your 10 and 12 mark question okay can you hear me jim yeah you're fine mate yeah, don't, don't, don't listen to uh, suggestions that you've been muted. You're not. You're fine. All right, okay. Thanks for that. Good stuff. So let's just do a, let's break it up a bit by um, a couple of little of MCQs. Now, remember, you won't get MCQs as part of your uh, 
exam paper. It's just a way of testing knowledge. So we've got two statements here. Centralization is where the majority of business decisions are made by a few senior managers. Is that true or false? HDI stands for Human Development Index. Is that true or false? So are both those true? It's one true, it's one false. Have a think. Now I'm just gonna go into my uh yeah, looking at the I'm just following I'm following the chat window here as well on my new mobile telephone device. Good stuff. Yeah, I think we're all going for perfect. Should we reveal the answer? Yeah, it is indeed true. Excellent. Now centralization lends itself again to a to a 20 marker. Should a business become central or remain centralized generally or become decentralized? And we're going to cover 20 markers shortly and then a little bit of time for um, Q&A. So I think there's one more of these. So a tariff is a method of protectionism whereby a country limits the amount of goods that can be supplied to a market. True or false? A democratic leadership style is where a dominant figure within the business decides what is best true or false some comedians are putting e there um it's definitely not e so the majority are going oh lot, lots going for b and c lots going for b should we reveal the answer it is indeed false it's not a tariff it's um careful how it pronounces a quota quarter it's a quarter that's what that is. And it's not democratic. Do we know what leadership style has been defined there in statement two? Do you want to type them in the chat window? Again, leadership styles are ripe 20 mark questions because you know you can evaluate different types of leadership styles. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. So, you know, you could have went down the autocrat or put or you know, paternalistic really is where, you know, a dominant figure, like a parental figure. So either or there. Anyway, it's definitely not democratic. So let's move on. So I think it's this final one of these. Market orientation involves developing goods and services based around customers' need and wants. According to the Ansoft matrix, selling new products in new markets is classified as market development. Now, but I hear you cry. Ansoft Matrix is not in theme one. It's part of, you know, it's not on theme one. It appears again in theme four, global. It's a global marketing approach. So remember, theme four takes a global view of a lot of earlier topics. So you may have covered the Ansoft Matrix in a, in a, in a local or national context. This will be a global context. Okay, so the analysis is different. So let's reveal the answer. Okay, yeah, it's um, a continent of matrix selling new products in new markets is diversification. So that is uh, false and it is indeed the first one's true. So again, you might get a question such as assess the of, assess of benefit of market orientation to a business such as, or you might get, you know, Apple are gonna launch a new iPhone. Should they take a market oriented approach or a product oriented approach? Evaluate both options and recommend which one Apple should take to increase uh, profit. Okay, let's move on on to the 20 mark questions and we'll have a little bit of time for Q and A. So remember there are two 20 mark questions on paper one. Both of them require you to evaluate two options and then make a recommendation. Okay, so it will be, we'll use that example actually of, of Apple. So Apple are considering launching a new, we'll do, we'll do an Apple Watch because they're just about to launch a new iPhone. Apple are considering launching a, or developing a new Apple Watch. Should they adopt a market-oriented approach or a product-oriented approach? Evaluate both options and recommend which one Apple should take in order to increase sales revenue. The hook in their sales revenue. So you need to evaluate both options. So an argument as to why they should take a market-oriented approach, this is when you would need your however point at the end because the question will ask you to evaluate both options. Then you would argue for product-oriented. Then you would balance that with a short however point. Therefore, you've evaluated both options. Then you would come to a recommendation. This must be more than a simple conclusion. Lots of marks available for the conclusion. 
the recommendation, sorry, again, you know, maybe an element of mops in there, and it can't be just a repeat of your previous arguments. Now, it is really important that in the 20 mark question, I call it a hook. There will be something in there that you must focus on. So that Apple question I talked about, it was about whether it would help them increase sales revenue. Okay, so your analysis and your recommendation must link to sales revenue. It could be about your 20 mark, it could be on profit. You know, and therefore you'd have to link it to profit. So whatever the hook is in the question, make sure your analysis and your recommendation links tightly to that. Okay, have we got anything more on? Have we got another slide on 20 markers, Jim? No. So what we thought we would do is, you know, because we've done 40 minutes there, we thought we would, you know, there there, are, there is a lots and lots and lots of people joining us. So how long should we spend on 12 mark questions and 10 mark questions? Well, roughly working on a mark a minute, we'd expect you to spend 10 minutes on a 10 mark question and 12 minutes on a 12 mark question. Of course, that depends on, you know, how long you've spent on the, 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 the two four markers at the start of the paper. Because if you get a four mark calculation question, chances are you might be able to do that in two minutes. So that's going to give you a little bit more time but you really need to stick to the time allocation a lot of students run out of time on the section b 20 marker so what do i mean by hook well what i mean it's really in the 20 mark question there'll be something in there it will be along the lines of should the business do a should a business do b in order to achieve c and uh, c would be the hook so it could be increase here sales revenue it could be market share that would be a good one so aldi are considering two options to increase market share should they maybe um open you know more stores in the uk or more stores overseas that's your global aspect which one should recommend which one they should do in order to increase market share that's a different question than what should they do to increase profit or sales revenue so that's what we would call the hook so you must make sure your your evaluation and your analysis addresses that within your answer. Okay. Big shout out to Mrs. O'Farrell there from uh, from Welly. Okay. Would you recommend 20 markers first? No. I wouldn't. Now, the reason is there has been a couple of incidents where a previous question has allowed um, information from a previous question could have been used in a 20 marker. So... There's no need. If they wanted you to do the 20 markers first, it will put them at the start of the paper. You've just got to be tight on the time. You've got to be tight on the time. So I wouldn't recommend uh, doing the 20 markers first, to be honest, because I think I think the danger there is you could spend 30, 30 minutes on them. You know, so I wouldn't be doing it first, Grizzly Bear. I know that might be hard to bear, but I wouldn't be doing them. Um, I wouldn't be doing them first. Should evaluation for a 20 mark uh, all be at the end in a final paragraph or after each paragraph? Well, that's a really good question. Now, you have to evaluate both options. So you would have however points at the end of each argument. So there is some evaluation there already through 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 the answer. So in a 20 marker, we'll use Apple again. Uh, one reason why they should use a market oriented approach is then you do your analysis. However, you would balance that with a short however point. One reason why they should do product orientation, your paragraph, then you'd balance that with a short however point. So, so you've evaluated both options there, then a recommendation, which would be your final recommendation. Okay. So, um, well, now that, that's an interesting one, that. I would try and avoid... Um, pre-drilled evaluative phrases unless they're really applied to the question so i've seen lots of students you know trying to shoehorn in short and long term it works for some questions but not for all you know so there may be some 20 mark questions where you know to add value to your recommendation you might say right this may this may be good you know in the short term this may happen in the long term but a lot of the time it doesn't apply so you can't just say I've got to get short and long term in every evaluation. That's just not that's not that's not correct. Uh, boom bam. How do I so or oh, four sorry, or two big paragraphs? Yeah. Okay, uh, we'll do that one. So so the twenty marker. Remember, there's two options to uh, to, to 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 look at. So you need. I'm going to use the word chunky because I like that. You're going to need a chunky paragraph for option one, 
with a short however point. Then you're going to need a chunky paragraph for option two, then a short however point, and then your recommendation. That's how you can. Or to, to to be honest, though, I mean, you can write you can write as many paragraphs as you want, but remember, you know, if you think about it, there's only there's only eight more marks than a twelve mark question, and you've got to give a much more detailed recommendation as well. So there's not the time. Uh, if we are running out of time, should we not write however points for ten or twelve mark by having balance in the conclusion? Well, you, like I think we've it's, it's a good question, Chantel, but and I think you know. As long as in your 10, 10 or 12 mark questions you've got balance there, right, then you don't really need however points at the end of your paragraphs as long as you've got balance. So if the 10 mark question is um, assess the benefit of uh, price skimming to, to Apple when they're going to launch a new product, as long as you say why price skimming may be of benefit and then balance that with why it may not be a benefit in a conclusion, you don't need however points at the end of each paragraph because you've already provided balance there. So make sure uh, you've got a balanced response. Okay. Can I make plans on the answer paper or should I use extra every everything? Remember this year you've got you've got a um you've got a source booklet having you, your case study comes out. So so basically it'll be next year. Uh, everything should go in your answer paper. So all your workings and everything. It's all scanned in. So you should really, um, you know, do everything in the paper. That's a great question there about should we read the case study first before answering the questions. I would, I would read, um, I would look at the questions and then look at the look at the extracts, because that way, you know, you're going to know what you're going to focus on. So by reading the questions, you can think actually I need to pick that out or I need to pick that out. So looking at some of the others here, there's so much. Do they mark plans, notes, and diagrams? You know, yeah, it's um, if that's all you did, then obviously, you know, the, the, you, you, the, the, it would certainly be looked at. Everything's looked at in the paper. So, do I get limited to a certain level? No, mops is just uh, it's just a technique. So no, it's not in the um, it's what we call in a part of the indicative content. So you know, you don't have to follow mops. It's just a method. It's just a method. To allow you to maybe bring something new into your um into your answer so no it's just a technique don't worry about it so yeah we've talked about that yeah if 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 for example say you say you were um, you had a minute left and you you haven't started the last 20 marker so you start just planning down and writing bullet points and stuff like that you know if there was anything in there of any credit then of course you know it could be you know it could be awarded some marks so any few, we've got about five up. minutes left, Reb, so we'll try and squeeze some more questions in here. Loads coming through. So oh, I'm trying yeah, to pick out the yeah. questions that have been repeated several times, which is cool. Okay, so how long should we spend on a four marker? Four minutes, Max. Four minutes. Then move on. You were on. saying earlier, Graham, that students are, are running out of time later because they're over answering the four markers. Getting over into time trouble early demo, yeah. Yeah, yeah, over answering the um, the four mark. Uh, uh, there was a question there. About, there was something in chat window about will investment appraisal be examined? No, not on paper one because it's part of theme three. So, no, it won't come up. So, it's just theme one and theme four, isn't it, for paper one? Yeah, yeah. Can we use calculation questions from previous answers? If they relate to, then of course, yeah. If, if they relate, then yeah, you can do. Then you can do that, yeah. Absolutely fine to do that if they relate. Number of people asking uh, about what the grade boundaries are likely to be. Do you, do you want to explain how grade boundaries are set, Graham? Because obviously the answer is we don't know, do we? We don't know. Gen, you know, no, we 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 don't know. They're just set based on you know when when the papers are examined. You know, the the grade boundaries are set on really what students have um, have performed. It's it's an impossible question, and and really, you shouldn't really be. There's nothing you can do about the grade boundaries. So there's no point in having any concern about the grain boundaries whatsoever. All you need to do is do your very best on the paper and then the rest will take care of itself. So do do not worry about the grain boundaries. Don't worry about it. It will be what it will be. Uh, now, that's a great question, Harriet. Now, you can. Of course, you can give definitions at the start of your answers and there's nothing wrong with doing that. And indeed, in the four mark questions, because there's a mark for knowledge on the format explain questions, you know, starting with a definition will secure you that knowledge mark. 
Um, but you don't need to because you can get the knowledge mark in the main body of your response. The danger with definitions comes into play in the 20 markers where you might have, you know, assess the value of, no, sorry, not assess the value, that wouldn't be a 20 marker. Um, Apple are considering a product oriented approach or a market oriented approach. Which one should they do to increase market share? We've well, got three key terms there. You've got market share, product oriented, market oriented. Would you write a definition of all three? You know, it's going to take so much time and you can get your knowledge marks within the main body of response. So definitions, if it gives you confidence, by all means use them, but you will not be penalized for not having a definition as long as there's knowledge and understanding within the main body of your answer. So should I take a calculator into the exam if investment <laughs> appraisal won't be examined? Yes, because you might get market share, size or growth. So you might get paid, you might get yet. So yes, bring a calculator in. There are there are quantitative and numerical concepts on in every theme. So does the evaluation have to be new points or just evaluate? So what you need to do is you need to you need your your recommendation for your twenty mark must build on prior analysis. Okay, but it can't be just a repetition of what you've already said because that will have already been marked. There has to be something new in there, like a new piece of context. So that's why, um, we, you know, that's why MOPS can be a useful technique in order to maybe bring something new in there or maybe, and it depends on point, as long as if you're going to use it depends, explain why it depends on that. Don't just say Apple should use a market oriented approach, but it depends on their marketing budget. Well, that's not evaluation. Why does it depend on the marketing budget? So do we need to know cross elasticity of demand? No, Matthew, it's not on the specification. So don't worry about that. So again, I would, I would, the way I would look at it personally is I'd have a quick look at the questions and then, then look at the, then, then, then look at the extracts because that's going to allow you to pick out really um, key points. Uh, Dan say about disco M. I'm not really familiar. I'm not really familiar with disco M to be fair. Um, you know, if it's worked for you, maybe if your teachers told you to use that and it's worked for you, then 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 use it. But I'm really not familiar with that that technique, to be fair. So I wouldn't want to be drawn on. I wouldn't want to be drawn on that. Would you leave tutor to you if someone offered you the manager's role? Actually, I've just had uh, the chairman on the on the phone there. No, I would never. I wouldn't. Who would look after Jim if I left? Who would look after Jim? Yep. No. I can think of a few people, but yeah, you're right. Good point, yeah. <laughs> so uh, another another exam technique related one. Actually, uh, to be fair, Yale's been very, very, very patient to ask this question patient. two or three yeah. times. So, so how many chains of analysis are needed? Well, it's a, it's again, it's a very difficult question to answer. That if you've done GCSE, particular, you know, one of the exam boards where you're looking at what we call strands of analysis, it doesn't really, it doesn't really work that way. It's all about explaining the hows and the whys in context. So, for example, a question such as um, assess the value of or the impact of of increasing the amount of commission um, a, a business pays to its staff. Okay, you can't just say increasing commission would lead to increased motivation, which would therefore would lead to better customer service, therefore increased sales and profit. There's, that's not analysis, that's just knowledge strung together with connectives. You'd have to say why paying commission would lead to increased motivation and why increased motivation may lead. Um, it's never going to sell any ice cream going that fast. Uh, you'd have to say, you'd have to explain why increased motivation would lead to better customer service and the impact of and how that would lead to increased sales revenue and why that might lead to increased profit. So... You can't really say you need X amount of chains of analysis because it does, we mark, examiners mark even holistically. So basically, they'll read your answer and make an overall judgment. Um, are Newcastle going to get Champions League? Well, we certainly hope not. Come on, Leicester, tonight, 8 o'clock. So, ah, one more question coming in, Graham. It's quite an important one for Morgan. Actually, it's been asked by numbers, a number of other people. Here we go. Last question. What should for we? Session. I would have. I would have a big slice of business pie. No, I tend to have something. Um, I would have something that's going to, you know, not give you a big energy spike, you know, give you that low release during the day. Uh, my daughter's doing her GCSEs at the minute. And every morning 
I make a um, I make a I make a fruit smoothie with oat milk and a bit of peanut butter. Slow release carbs on the morning, so she doesn't get a spike in energy. So every morning, Daisy has uh, smoothie, banana, a bit of banana in there, some strawberries, some blueberries. Get those antioxidants in. Oat milk, peanut butter. She absolutely laps up. More recipes um, in next week's live stream. <laughs> uh, George is asking a question. A number of people asking in terms of yeah, you know, what now? Because we've obviously got a few hours. A few hours before uh, you, we retire for the do night. You know Any thoughts? Really, it's it's a really interesting one because, like you know, as as a parent myself who's got kids doing the GCSEs, my my daughter did her A levels last year. I recommended that you know what you really need to get a good night's sleep and try and relax, you know, because the exam paper one's tomorrow. So really, you know, you, you've you've took part in the live stream. If you want to watch that back, you, you, I mean, you can do on our Instagram uh, account. We've got loads of little mini MCQ questions there and some 60 second videos. If you think actually, if there's something, you know, if you're not going to get to sleep because you're really worried about a certain topic, then just choose that topic, read around it tonight and then put it out your mind. But the hard work's been done really. So I would, um, I would basically relax as best you can. And, yeah. um, you know, you know, the exams tomorrow. You'll be fine. I'll give you that. Yeah. And uh, there we go. Our time is up. We said we'd do just under 55 minutes and it's 17.54. So uh, all the best to everybody taking paper one tomorrow. Graham, many thanks for, for putting that uh, session together and answering so many questions as well. We can't cover everything. We did some easy questions to help just a gentle warm up. Um, but obviously there are lots of other things if you want to go back through some of our live streams they're all recorded at tutor.net forward slash live if as graham says if you want to just maybe spend half an hour perusing some some questions and some calculations that's cool wish you all the best if you've enjoyed the session or found it useful uh, press the like button if you've not enjoyed the session and not find it useful press the like button and uh, that'll be really helpful to uh, to suggest this and other content to uh, uh, other red excel students we are back over half term with some more theme two theme three themed live stream revision sessions and of course we're also going to be doing a a paper two warm-up as well but for now wishing you from all of us here graham and rachel and all the team who did the great booster for edxl and everybody else to you wishing you all the best in paper one tomorrow any final words g no just good luck everyone you know the engagement's been great the answers have been great there's nothing i'm seeing in the chat window that's causing any any cause for concern just do your best and you will be absolutely fine Good luck tomorrow. We are literally 100% behind you. Good luck, everyone. See you soon. <laughs>